Hey guys, in preparation for Google's mobile getting coming up here on April 21st, I want to talk mobile and I want to talk about what I would do if I were analyzing a mobile site to see if it's ready. So I'll just start with my own site and click analyze. So as you can see here, Google's mobile friendly test has assessed my page, my home page as being mobile friendly, which is good. So next up, I would wanna to go to Google Webmaster Tools, go to search traffic, mobile usability, and look to see if Google is giving me any errors. So on my site, now I was kind of surprised to find this. I thought I would at least have some things that Google flagged, but I didn't but I'll just pull up a site that did have errors that were flagged. And you can see down here, touch elements too close, content not sized to viewport, small font size, viewport not configured, flash usage. And it gives you the number of pages where Google found those errors. And if you click on any of these usability errors, it will actually give you a list of the pages where Google found these errors. So next up, what I would do is pull up the site. Now, you can pull up the site on your mobile device, but then one, you're gonna be limited to just your mobile device or mobile devices, but also you don't have access to very many tools when you're testing on a mobile device unless you're using a proxy like Fiddler or something like that. So I wanna show you a cool tool that Chrome Developer Tools gives you. So if I right click on the page and choose Inspect Element, that will take me into Chrome Developer Tools. On the Mac, I usually just press Command Option I. But if you click this little icon here, it will allow you to emulate the site on a mobile device. And I already had it selected from a previous session, so it automatically selected it. But then up here, you can choose your mobile device that you want to emulate. So let's say I choose the Apple iPhone 6. Then what you want to do is refresh the page. And there are a couple things I want to point out. So first off, if you see it cut off, then you need to take this window here and just drag it down. Because the iPhone 6 is a little bigger than the iPhone 5. Like if I choose the iPhone 5, I refresh the page. It fits a little more comfortably in the screen. So this is what my site looks like on an iPhone 5. So the first thing I want to point out is this circle here, which is designed to replicate the touch function on a phone. And if you click and kind of push it or click and drag, it will replicate the motion of touching and dragging with a phone. And if you hold down shift, you can also replicate zooming in and out by pinching. So a few things I want to point out. If we want to replicate the motion of turning the phone on its side, you can click this little icon here. It says Swap Dimensions. And now I can see what my site looks like if someone turns their phone on its side. We'll turn that back. This two here is letting us know that this is a retina display. So if I switch to an older phone, like probably the 3GS, hit refresh, you'll notice here it's a one. That means it's not a retina display. We'll switch to the Google Nexus 10. Now let's go down to the Galaxy. Click refresh. Now notice here, this is also spoofing the actual user agent. Notice here it says Android. So if I went into Google Analytics for my site and I look at my real-time reports, now I'm the only one on the site right now because it's two o'clock in the morning and that's just crazy. But if I go to content, you'll notice here it's indicating I'm on a mobile device. So I'm looking at the, this page here, but it's detecting I'm on a mobile device. If I change this to 
let's say the iPad and click refresh now this is going to change from mobile to tablet and if I close out of the emulator it's going to show as desktop so a few other things here you can replicate what kind of network you're on so if I clicked here it would be no throttling, but that's not a very realistic picture of how people are experiencing my site on a mobile device. So if I chose Wi-Fi, then you would actually start to experience some lag if my site's not very well optimized. You can also choose 4G, 3G, etc., etc. You'll also notice here that the user agent is now the iPad. But I could change that if I wanted to. I'm not sure why exactly you would want to do that. So a few other things to take note of here is that I have access to all the tools that I would normally have in Chrome Developer Tools, which is really nice. So if I wanted to go in here and change my CSS, I could come in here and I could say, well, let me see what this will look like, and let me change this to a mobile device. Uh, we'll change it to the iPhone 5. Let's say here, I want to change the CSS. So if I right-click Inspect Element, and let's say I change the font size, by just clicking the down arrow and make it smaller, we'll be able to preview what that would look like on a mobile device. So if I took this down to 20 pixels, I can see what that would look like. And I could switch out my user agent, I could view it in other mobile devices. So everything that you can normally do in Chrome Developer Tools, you can do with the emulator on. Now, if I had advertising on my site, I would also see how the ads look on the site. If I had a pop-up, I would be able to see how obtrusive the pop-up is. So this is a really, really good option for assessing issues on your site. So if you saw something like an error content not sized to viewport, you could look at those pages, pull them up in the emulator, and look at them on different devices to see what's happening with the content in the viewport. Elements too close to touch. You could pull up those specific pages in Chrome Developer Tools and try to touch them, try to see how close they are on different devices. So it's a really powerful option and gives you many more options than you have by just opening up your device and checking things out. One other feature I want to point out is this media queries option here. If I hover over this little icon here, it'll say seven media queries found. Mine are only blue, and blue indicates media queries that specify a maximum width. If I go to your Tango, I'll click through to a page press command option I or right click and this was still selected so that's why it took me right into the emulator and I'm gonna refresh I'm actually going to pop this over to the right because it kinda makes more sense when you're testing this kinda stuff now sometimes I run into this little bug for some reason I only run into it with the Your Tango site but if it happens I'll either just refresh the page again to unsnag it, or I'll choose a different device and then come back to that device and refresh the page and it will work. But now, if I hover over this, you'll see there are 31 media queries found. And if I move this over, the blue ones are specifying a maximum width. You can see this over here when I hover over it. The orange are specifying minimum widths and the green 
are specifying media queries that have a width between two values. And if I click and drag past any of these lines here, then you'll see the design of the site update. So if I click and drag, there we go. So you could see when I pass this point here, 767 pixels, it updated. Not sure if it'll update again. Little bit, nothing too dramatic. So it looks like we start to get the right rail at this mark here. So anyway, you can play around with your media queries and see how your site responds at different widths. So there you go, a few strategies to help you assess the mobile health of your site.